Understanding these processes is crucial for diagnosing and treating endocrine disorders and developing targeted therapies. Physical characteristics of hormones in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Physical characteristics of hormones. Hormones are signaling molecules that play a vital role in regulating various physiological processes within the body. They can be classified based on their chemical composition and physical characteristics. Let's delve into the physical characteristics of hormones in detail. 1. Chemical composition. Hormones can be broadly categorized into three main types based on their chemical composition. Peptide hormones. These are composed of amino acids and include hormones like insulin, growth hormone, and oxytocin. Steroid hormones. These are derived from cholesterol and include hormones like cortisol, testosterone, and estrogen. Amino acid derivative hormones. These are derived from amino acids and include hormones like epinephrine and thyroid hormones. 2. Solubility. Hormones exhibit varying degrees of solubility, which affects their transportation and receptor interactions. Water soluble hormones. Peptide and amino acid derivative hormones are water soluble. They travel freely in the bloodstream but cannot easily cross cell membranes. They bind to cell surface receptors to initiate signaling pathways. Lipid soluble hormones. Steroid hormones are lipid soluble and can diffuse through cell membranes. They bind to intracellular receptors in the cytoplasm or nucleus and directly affect gene transcription. 3. Stability. The stability of hormones influences their duration of action. Peptide hormones. Water soluble hormones have shorter half lives and are rapidly degraded by enzymes in the blood and tissues. Steroid hormones. Lipid soluble hormones have longer half lives and are more stable in the bloodstream. 4. Binding proteins. Many hormones circulate in the bloodstream bound to carrier proteins, which affects their availability and half life. Steroid hormones. Lipid soluble hormones often bind to carrier proteins, which protect them from rapid degradation and extend their half life. Peptide hormones. Water soluble hormones typically do not require carrier proteins for transport. 5. Half life. The half life of a hormone refers to the time it takes for half of the hormone to be cleared from the bloodstream. Peptide hormones. Due to their water solubility and susceptibility to enzymatic degradation, peptide hormones have relatively short half lives. Steroid hormones. Lipid soluble hormones have longer half lives due to their stability and binding to carrier proteins. 6. Target tissue interactions. Hormones interact with specific receptors on target tissues to initiate a response. Water soluble hormones. These hormones bind to cell surface receptors and activate second messenger systems, leading to rapid responses. Lipid soluble hormones. These hormones enter target cells and directly affect gene expression, leading to slower but longer lasting responses. 7. Feedback regulation. Hormone secretion is often regulated by feedback loops involving target tissue responses and control centers in the brain. Negative feedback. Hormone release is inhibited when the target tissue's response is achieved. This helps maintain homeostasis. Positive feedback. Hormone release is stimulated when the target tissue's response amplifies the initial stimulus. 8. Regulation by glands. Hormones are produced and released by specific endocrine glands. Pituitary gland. The pituitary gland releases hormones that regulate various bodily functions, including growth, reproduction, and metabolism. Thyroid gland. The thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones that influence metabolism and energy balance. Adrenal glands. The adrenal glands produce hormones like cortisol and adrenaline that respond to stress. Conclusion. The physical characteristics of hormones, including their chemical composition, solubility, stability, binding proteins, and target tissue interactions, contribute to their diverse functions and modes of action. These characteristics enable hormones to orchestrate a wide range of physiological processes and maintain the body's homeostasis. Understanding these physical properties is crucial for comprehending hormone action, diagnosing endocrine disorders, and developing targeted treatments. Latency of hormones in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Latency of hormones. The latency of hormones refers to the time interval between the release of a hormone and the onset of its physiological effects. This latency period is influenced by various factors, including hormone synthesis, transportation, receptor binding, and downstream cellular responses. Let's explore the latency of hormones in detail. 1. Hormone synthesis and release. The latency of hormones is affected by the time it takes for the hormone producing gland to synthesize and release the hormone into the bloodstream. Different hormones have varying synthesis rates, secretion patterns, and storage mechanisms. For example, peptide hormones are synthesized in response to specific stimuli and are rapidly released from storage vesicles in response to signaling. Steroid hormones, being lipid soluble, are synthesized on demand and can diffuse across cell membranes after synthesis. 2. Transportation and distribution. After release, hormones need to reach their target tissues. The time it takes for hormones to circulate in the bloodstream and reach target cells influences the latency period. This is influenced by factors like the hormone solubility and its interaction with carrier proteins, which can prolong or expedite transportation. 3. Receptor binding and signal transduction. Upon reaching target cells, hormones need to bind to their specific receptors to initiate a response. The latency period is determined by the time it takes for the hormone receptor interaction to occur. For water soluble hormones, which bind to cell surface receptors, this interaction can happen relatively quickly. For lipid soluble hormones that need to cross cell membranes and bind to intracellular receptors, the latency period might be longer. 4. Cellular response time. After hormone receptor binding, a series of intracellular events are triggered to produce a physiological response. The latency period includes the time required for these intracellular events to occur. This can vary based on the complexity of the signaling pathways involved in the nature of the response. 5. Feedback regulation. Feedback loops can also impact the latency of hormone effects. Negative feedback mechanisms, where the hormone itself or its downstream products inhibit further hormone release, can influence how long it takes for the hormone's effects to become evident. Upon reaching target cells, hormones need to bind to their specific receptors to initiate a response. The latency period is determined by the time it takes for the hormone receptor interaction to occur. For water-soluble hormones, which bind to cell surface receptors, this interaction can happen relatively quickly. For lipid-soluble hormones that need to cross cell membranes and bind to intracellular receptors, the latency period might be longer. 4. Cellular response time. After hormone receptor binding, a series of intracellular events are triggered to produce a physiological response. The latency period includes the time required for these intracellular events to occur. This can vary based on the complexity of the signaling pathways involved in the nature of the response. 5. Feedback regulation. Feedback loops can also impact the latency of hormone effects. Negative feedback mechanisms, where the hormone itself or its downstream products inhibit further hormone release, can influence how long it takes for the hormone's effects to become evident. Positive feedback loops, which amplify hormone release, can also affect the latency period. 6. Individual variation. The latency of hormones can vary among individuals due to genetic factors, hormonal balance, health status, and age. Additionally, external factors such as stress, nutrition, and circadian rhythms can influence the latency period. 7. Example scenarios. Insulin. After consuming a meal, insulin is released by the pancreas to regulate blood sugar levels. The latency period for insulin's effects can be relatively short, as it acts quickly to facilitate glucose uptake into cells. Thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones, which regulate metabolism, have a longer latency period. They are synthesized in response to signals from the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, and their effects on metabolism take some time to become evident. Conclusion. The latency of hormones encompasses the time it takes for a hormone to be synthesized, released, transported, bind to receptors, initiate signaling, and elicit a physiological response. The complexity of these processes, combined with individual variation and feedback mechanisms, contributes to the diverse latency periods observed among different hormones and physiological responses. Understanding hormone latency is crucial for diagnosing hormone-related disorders, optimizing hormone replacement therapies, and comprehending the timing of various physiological processes. Post secretary modification of hormones in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Post secretary modification of hormones. Post secretary modification refers to the biochemical changes that hormones undergo after they are synthesized and released from their respective endocrine glands. 
These modifications are essential for the hormones to acquire their active forms or to become inactive, and they play a crucial role in regulating the hormones' biological activity, half-life, and target specificity. Let's delve into the details of post-secretory modifications of hormones. 1. Proteolytic cleavage. Many peptide hormones are initially synthesized as larger precursor molecules called prohormones. These prohormones contain additional amino acid sequences that are cleaved off to produce the active hormone. For example, insulin is synthesized as proinsulin, and proteolytic cleavage removes the C peptide segment to yield active insulin. 2. Glycosylation. Some peptide hormones, especially Post secretary modification of hormones in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Post secretory modification of hormones. Post secretory modification refers to the biochemical changes that hormones undergo after they are synthesized and released from their respective endocrine glands. These modifications are essential for the hormones to acquire their active forms or to become inactive, and they play a crucial role in regulating the hormones' biological activity, half life, and target specificity. Let's delve into the details of post secretory modifications of hormones. 1. Proteolytic cleavage. Many peptide hormones are initially synthesized as larger precursor molecules called prohormones. These prohormones contain additional amino acid sequences that are cleaved off to produce the active hormone. For example, insulin is synthesized as proinsulin, and proteolytic cleavage removes the C peptide segment to yield active insulin. 2. Glycosylation. Some peptide hormones, especially glycoproteins, undergo glycosylation, where sugar molecules are added to the hormone's peptide chain. This modification can affect hormone stability, solubility, and receptor binding. Thyroid stimulating hormone TSH and luteinizing hormone LH are examples of glycosylated hormones. 3. Sulfation and phosphorylation. Sulfate and phosphate groups can be added to certain amino acids in peptide hormones. These modifications can alter the hormone's biological activity, receptor binding, and half-life. Sulfation of thyroglobulin in the thyroid gland is crucial for thyroid hormone synthesis and secretion. 4. Enzymatic activation. Inactive hormone precursors may require enzymatic activation to become biologically active. For instance, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin I by the enzyme renin, and further modifications result in the active hormone angiotensin 2. 4. Enzymatic activation. Inactive hormone precursors may require enzymatic activation to become biologically active. For instance, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin I by the enzyme renin, and further modifications result in the active hormone angiotensin 2. 5. Conversion to active forms. Some hormones are initially synthesized in their inactive or precursor forms and require specific biochemical reactions to become active. Vitamin D, for example, is converted into its active form calcitriol through sequential hydroxylation steps in the liver and kidneys. 6. Proteolytic inactivation. Peptide hormones can also undergo proteolytic degradation to terminate their signaling. Enzymes like proteases cleave the hormone into small. Secretary modification of hormones in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Post secretory modification of hormones. Post secretory modification refers to the biochemical changes that hormones undergo after they are synthesized and released from their respective endocrine glands. These modifications are essential for the hormones to acquire their active forms or to become inactive, and they play a crucial role in regulating the hormones' biological activity, half life, and target specificity. Let's delve into the details of post secretory modifications of hormones. 1. Proteolytic cleavage. Many peptide hormones are initially synthesized as larger precursor molecules called prohormones. These prohormones contain additional amino acid sequences that are cleaved off to produce the active hormone. For example, insulin is synthesized as proinsulin, and proteolytic cleavage removes the C peptide segment to yield active insulin. 2. Glycosylation. Some peptide hormones, especially glycoproteins, undergo glycosylation, where sugar molecules are added to the hormone's peptide chain. This modification can affect hormone stability, solubility, and receptor binding. Thyroid stimulating hormone TSH and luteinizing hormone LH are examples of glycosylated hormones. 3. Sulfation and phosphorylation. Sulfate and phosphate groups can be added to certain amino acids in peptide hormones. These modifications can alter the hormone's biological activity, receptor binding, and half-life. Sulfation of thyroglobulin in the thyroid gland is crucial for thyroid hormone synthesis and secretion. 4. Enzymatic activation. Inactive hormone precursors may require enzymatic activation to become biologically active. For instance, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin I by the enzyme renin, and further modifications result in the active hormone angiotensin 2. 5. Conversion to active forms. Some hormones are initially synthesized in their inactive or precursor forms and require specific biochemical reactions to become active. Vitamin D, for example, is converted into its active form calcitriol through sequential hydroxylation steps in the liver and kidneys. 6. Proteolytic inactivation. Peptide hormones can also undergo proteolytic degradation to terminate their signaling. Enzymes like proteases cleave the hormone into smaller fragments that are inactive or have reduced biological activity. This helps to regulate hormone levels and prevent prolonged signaling. 7. Steroid hormones. Steroid hormones, which are derived from cholesterol, are synthesized by various enzymatic reactions. Post secretory modifications of steroid hormones are minimal, and their biological activity depends on receptor binding and interactions with carrier proteins. 8. Carrier proteins and metabolism. Some hormones, such as thyroid hormones and steroid hormones, bind to carrier proteins in the bloodstream. These proteins protect the hormones from rapid metabolism and clearance, extending their half lives and allowing for controlled release of target tissues. 9. Receptor interaction. Hormone receptor interactions at target cells can lead to further modifications. Receptor binding can trigger conformational changes in the hormonal receptor, leading to downstream signaling events that modulate the hormone's activity and cellular response. 10. Feedback regulation. Post secretory modifications can also be influenced by feedback mechanisms. If the hormone's effects are too strong or prolonged, negative feedback loops may regulate hormone synthesis, secretion, or post secretory modifications to maintain homeostasis. 11. Health and age effects. The efficiency of post secretory modifications can vary based on an individual's health status and age. Diseases affecting enzymes involved in these modifications can lead to hormone related disorders. Conclusion. Post secretory modifications of hormones involve a range of biochemical changes that affect the hormone's activity, stability, and interactions with target cells. These modifications are essential for regulating hormone function, ensuring proper signaling, and maintaining physiological balance. The diverse array of modifications allows hormones to exert their effects in a controlled and orchestrated manner, contributing to the intricate regulatory networks that govern endocrine physiology. Half life of hormones in detail, very long answer. ChatGPT. Half life of hormones. The half life of the hormone refers to the time it takes for half of the hormone to be metabolized, degraded, or cleared from the bloodstream. The half life of hormones varies widely and is influenced by factors such as the hormone's chemical structure, its mode of secretion, its interactions with carrier proteins, and its metabolism by enzymes. Understanding the half life of hormones is crucial for determining the duration of action, therapeutic dosing, and overall physiological effects. Let's delve into the details of hormone half lives. 1. Peptide hormones. Peptide hormones, such as insulin, glucagon, and growth hormone, generally have shorter half lives due to their vulnerability to enzymatic degradation and rapid clearance by the kidneys. The half life of most peptide hormones ranges from a few minutes to a couple of hours. 2. Steroid hormones. Steroid hormones, including cortisol, testosterone, and estrogen, have longer half lives compared to peptide hormones. Steroid hormones are often bound to carrier proteins, such as sex hormone binding globulin SHBG or corticosteroid binding globulin CBG, which extends their half lives and prevents rapid clearance. The half life of steroid hormones can range from hours to days. 3. Thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones T3 and T4 have longer half lives due to their binding to carrier proteins and their involvement in complex metabolic processes. Thyroid hormones are synthesized and released from the thyroid gland, but their conversion and metabolism in peripheral tissues further influence their half lives. 4. Hormone clearance. Hormones are cleared from the bloodstream through various mechanisms, including enzymatic degradation, renal filtration, and hepatic metabolism. Hormones that are metabolized by the liver are excreted by the 
Hormones are cleared from the bloodstream through various mechanisms, including enzymatic degradation, renal filtration, and hepatic metabolism. Hormones that are metabolized by the liver or excreted by the kidneys have shorter half-lives. 5. Receptor interaction. Hormones often exert their effects by binding to specific receptors on target cells. The duration of the hormone receptor complex influences the hormone's overall activity. Some hormones have a rapid onset of action but a short-lived effect due to the quick dissociation of the hormone receptor complex. 6. Feedback regulation. Feedback loops involving hormone secretion and receptor activity can influence the hormone's half-life. Negative feedback mechanisms may reduce hormone secretion when levels become elevated, affecting the hormone's overall concentration and duration of action. 7. Aging and health factors. Aging, along with various health conditions, can affect hormone half-lives. Enzyme activity, metabolism, and clearance rates may change with age or in the presence of certain diseases, leading to alterations in hormone kinetics. 8. Therapeutic implications. Understanding the half-life of hormones is critical for designing effective therapeutic interventions. For example, when administering hormone replacement therapy, the frequency and dosage of hormone administration are adjusted based on the hormone's half-life to maintain consistent levels in the body. 9. Hormone pulsatility. Some hormones are secreted in a pulsatile manner, with alternating periods of high and low secretion. Pulsatile secretion can affect the effective half-life of hormones, as the duration of elevated hormone levels contributes to their overall physiological effects. 10. Variability. It's important to note that hormone half-lives can vary among individuals due to genetic factors, health conditions, medications, and other individual characteristics. Conclusion. The half-life of hormones plays a pivotal role in determining the duration of their effects on target tissues. It's a key factor in understanding how hormones are regulated, metabolized, and cleared from the body. Hormones with shorter half-lives often have rapid but transient effects, while those with longer half-lives exert sustained actions. The diversity in hormone half-lives contributes to the complex and finely tuned regulatory mechanisms that maintain homeostasis in the body. Physiological roles of hormones in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. Physiological roles of hormones. Hormones are essential chemical messengers that play a crucial role in regulating various physiological processes within the body. They are produced by specialized endocrine glands and act on target cells or tissues to elicit specific responses. Hormones are involved in maintaining homeostasis, growth, development, metabolism, reproduction, and many other vital functions. Here, we'll explore the diverse physiological roles of hormones in detail. 1. Homeostasis regulation. Hormones help regulate internal balance by maintaining stable conditions within the body. For example, insulin regulates blood glucose levels, while thyroid hormones regulate metabolism to ensure a steady supply of energy. 2. Growth and development. Hormones play a significant role in growth and development during childhood, adolescence, and beyond. Growth hormone, produced by the pituitary gland, stimulates cell growth, tissue repair, and skeletal development. 3. Metabolism control. Hormones control metabolic processes, including the breakdown and synthesis of molecules for 1. Homeostasis regulation. Hormones help regulate internal balance by maintaining stable conditions within the body. For example, insulin regulates blood glucose levels, while thyroid hormones regulate metabolism to ensure a steady supply of energy. 2. Growth and development. Hormones play a significant role in growth and development during childhood, adolescence, and beyond. Growth hormone, produced by the pituitary gland, stimulates cell growth, tissue repair, and skeletal development. 3. Metabolism control. Hormones control metabolic processes, including the breakdown and synthesis of molecules for energy production, growth, and repair. Thyroid hormones influence the metabolic rate, while insulin and glucagon regulate carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. 4. Reproduction and sexual development. Hormones are vital for reproductive functions and sexual development. Gonadotropins, such as luteinizing hormone LH and follicle stimulating hormone FSH, regulate reproductive processes like ovulation and spermatogenesis. Sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone influence sexual maturation and secondary sexual characteristics. 5. Stress response. Hormones like cortisol, produced by the adrenal glands, play a role in the body's response to stress. They help mobilize energy reserves, increase alertness, and suppress non-essential functions during fight or flight situations. 6. Blood pressure and fluid balance. Hormones like aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone ADH regulate blood pressure and fluid balance by influencing the reabsorption of water and electrolytes in the kidneys. 7. Calcium regulation. Parathyroid hormone PTH and calcitonin control calcium levels in the blood, affecting bone health, nerve function, and muscle contraction. 8. Immune system modulation. Some hormones, like cortisol, have immune modulatory effects, regulating immune responses and inflammation. 9. Sleep wake cycle regulation. Melatonin, produced by the pineal gland, helps regulate the sleep wake cycle and circadian rhythms. 10. Pregnancy and childbirth. Hormones like progesterone and oxytocin play a crucial role in maintaining pregnancy, facilitating labor contractions, and milk production. 11. Mood and emotion regulation. Hormones can influence mood and emotions. Serotonin, often referred to as a feel good hormone, affects mood and happiness. 12. Bone health. Calcitonin and parathyroid hormone PTH regulate bone health by controlling calcium levels and bone remodeling. 13. Blood cell production. Erythropoietin EPO stimulates the production of red blood cells in response to low oxygen levels. 14. Water and electrolyte balance. Hormones like aldosterone, released by the adrenal glands, regulate water and electrolyte balance in the body. 15. Thermoregulation. Thyroid hormones help regulate body temperature by influencing metabolic rate and heat production. 16. Digestive system function. Gastrin, secretin, and other hormones regulate digestive processes by influencing gastric acid secretion, pancreatic enzyme release, and gut motility. 17. Appetite and satiety. Hormones like leptin and ghrelin regulate appetite and feelings of hunger and fullness. 18. Cardiovascular health. Hormones like adrenaline, epinephrine, and norepinephrine help regulate heart rate, blood vessel constriction, and blood pressure. 19. Skin health and repair. Hormones like growth hormone and sex hormones contribute to skin health, wound healing, and tissue repair. 20. Longevity and aging. Some hormones are believed to play a role in the aging process and longevity. In summary, hormones serve as crucial messengers that orchestrate various physiological functions in the body. Their precise regulation ensures the maintenance of health, homeostasis, growth, reproduction, and overall well-being. The intricate interplay between different hormones and their target tissues forms the foundation of the body's intricate regulatory network. More points. ChatGPT. Certainly, here are more points about the physiological roles of hormones. 21. Pain perception and modulation. Endorphins, often referred to as natural painkillers, are hormones that influence pain perception and provide a sense of well-being. 22. Memory and cognitive function. Hormones like brain-derived neurotrophic factor BDNF are involved in neuronal growth, synaptic plasticity, and memory formation. 23. Skin pigmentation. Melanocyte stimulating hormone MSH regulates skin pigmentation by affecting the production of melanin. 24. Hair growth and texture. Hormones like androgens influence hair growth and texture, particularly in males. 25. Immune system function. Thymocins and other hormones influence immune cell development, differentiation, and immune response regulation. 26. Muscle contraction and strength. Anabolic hormones like testosterone contribute to muscle growth, strength, and protein synthesis. 27. Blood sugar regulation. Insulin and glucagon maintain blood sugar levels by controlling the uptake, storage, and release of glucose from the liver and muscles. 28. Mood disorders and mental health. Imbalances in certain hormones have been associated with mood disorders like depression and anxiety. 29. Energy balance and obesity. Hormones like leptin and ghrelin influence appetite, metabolism, and energy balance, contributing to obesity and weight regulation. 30. Puberty and secondary sexual characteristics. 
Sex hormones trigger puberty and the development of secondary sexual characteristics such as breast growth and voice changes. 31. Blood clotting and coagulation. Hormones like thrombocoidin and erythropoidin influence blood clotting, platelet production, and red blood cell formation. 32. Nervous system function. Neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine are hormones that play roles in nerve signaling and mood regulation. 33. Organ function. Many hormones contribute to the proper functioning of specific organs, such as the heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, and digestive tract. 34. Wound healing and repair. Growth factors, including various hormones, promote tissue healing and repair after injury. 35. Adaptation to environmental changes. Hormones help the body adapt to changes in the environment, such as temperature fluctuations and stressors. 36. Pregnancy and fetal development. Hormones like human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, and progesterone support pregnancy and fetal development. 37. Communication between cells. Hormones enable communication between different cells and tissues, coordinating their activities for overall physiological function. 38. Antioxidant defense. Certain hormones, such as melatonin, have antioxidant properties and protect cells from oxidative damage. 39. Sensory perception. Hormones can influence sensory perception, such as taste, smell, and visual acuity. 40. Cellular differentiation and specialization. Hormones play a role in directing stem cells to differentiate into specific cell types during development and tissue repair. 41. Gene expression regulation. Hormones can influence gene expression patterns, leading to changes in protein synthesis and cellular activities. 42. Hematopoiesis. Erythropoietin and other hematopoietic hormones regulate the production of blood cells in bone marrow. 43. Adaptation to exercise. Hormones respond to physical activity by influencing energy metabolism, muscle growth, and recovery. 44. Connective tissue health. Hormones contribute to the health and maintenance of connective tissues like tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. 45. Blood pH regulation. Parathyroid hormone PTH regulates blood pH by controlling calcium levels and influencing bone resorption. 46. Thirst and fluid balance. Antidiuretic hormone ADH influences water reabsorption in the kidneys, affecting fluid balance and thirst perception. 47. Allergy and immune responses. Histamine and other immune modulating hormones play a role in allergic reactions and immune responses. 48. Bone remodeling. Calcitonin and parathyroid hormone PTH regulate bone remodeling by influencing osteoblast and osteoplast activity. 49. Gas exchange and breathing. Hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine influence the respiratory system by affecting bronchodilation and breathing rate. 50. Gastrointestinal motility. Hormones like gastrin and modeling regulate gastrointestinal motility and digestive processes. These diverse physiological roles highlight the complexity of hormone actions in the body. The interplay of various hormones and their interactions with target cells contribute to the intricate regulation of nearly every aspect of human physiology. General mechanisms of hormonal action in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. Certainly, here's a detailed explanation of the general mechanisms of hormonal action. 1. Reception. Hormonal action begins with the binding of a hormone molecule to its specific receptor on the surface of target cells or within the cell. Hormone receptors are proteins that are structurally complementary to the hormone molecules, allowing them to form a specific binding interaction. 2. Signal transduction. Upon hormone receptor binding, a series of molecular events, known as signal transduction, is initiated. Signal transduction involves a cascade of intracellular processes that amplify and transmit the hormonal signal, ultimately leading to a cellular response. 3. First messenger and second messenger systems. In many cases, hormone receptor binding triggers the production of second messengers within the cell. Second messengers, such as cyclic adenosine monophosphate camp, cyclic guanosine monophosphate CGMP, and inositol triphosphate IP3, act as intracellular intermediaries that relay the hormonal signal from the receptor to the cell's interior. 4. Activation of effector proteins. Second messengers activate specific effector proteins or enzymes within the cell. These effector proteins may include protein kinases, which phosphorylate other proteins, and phospholipases, which cleave phospholipids to release additional signaling molecules. Five, cellular response. The activation of effector proteins triggers a sequence of events that leads to a specific cellular response. This response can range from changes in gene expression, protein synthesis, enzyme activity, ion transport, metabolism, cell division, or secretion, depending on the hormone and the target cell type. Six, downstream signaling pathways. The activation of effector proteins can lead to the activation of downstream signaling pathways, involving various protein modifications, interactions, and amplification steps. These pathways can be highly complex and interconnected, allowing for precise control of the cellular response. Seven, gene expression regulation. Some hormones exert their effects by directly altering gene expression. Hormone receptor complexes can enter the cell nucleus and bind to specific DNA sequences known as hormone response elements (HRVs), influencing transcription and gene activity. 8. Feedback mechanisms. The effects of hormones are often subject to feedback mechanisms that help maintain homeostasis. Negative feedback involves the hormone's own effects inhibiting its further release, while positive feedback amplifies the hormonal response. These mechanisms contribute to fine-tuning hormone levels and maintaining physiological balance. 9. Hormone clearance and metabolism. After the hormonal signal has been transmitted and the desired cellular response achieved, the hormone must be cleared from the bloodstream to prevent prolonged effects. Hormones can be metabolized in various ways, such as enzymatic degradation, uptake by target cells, or excretion by organs like the liver or kidneys. 10. Duration of action. The duration of hormone action varies depending on factors such as the hormone's half-life, receptor affinity, and the presence of feedback mechanisms. Some hormones elicit rapid, transient responses, while others lead to sustained, long-lasting effects. In summary, the general mechanism of hormonal action involves hormone receptor binding, signal transduction, activation of second messengers, effector protein activation, cellular responses, and gene expression regulation. These processes collectively. In summary, the general mechanism of hormonal action involves hormone receptor binding, signal transduction, activation of second messengers, effector protein activation, cellular responses, and gene expression regulation. These processes collectively ensure that hormones exert their specific effects on target cells, coordinating and controlling various physiological processes in the body. Hormone receptors in detail. Very long answer. ChatGPT. Certainly, here's a detailed explanation of hormone receptors. One. Introduction. Hormone receptors are specialized proteins located on the surface or within target cells. These receptors play a critical role in transducing the signals carried by hormones into cellular responses. The interaction between hormones and the receptors is highly specific and allows for precise communication between different parts of the body. 2. Types of hormone receptors. Hormone receptors can be broadly categorized into two main types based on their location and mechanism of action, cell surface receptors and intracellular receptors. 3. Cell surface receptors. Cell surface receptors, also known as membrane receptors, are found on the plasma membrane of target cells. They are primarily associated with water-soluble hormones, such as peptides and catecholines, which cannot easily pass through the cell membrane. Cell surface receptors include g -Pro Cell surface receptors, also known as membrane receptors, are found on the plasma membrane of target cells. They are primarily associated with water-soluble hormones. They are primarily associated with water-soluble hormones, such as peptides and catecholines, which cannot easily pass through the cell membrane. Cell surface receptors include G-protein-coupled receptors, GPCRs. These receptors activate intracellular signaling pathways through the activation of G-proteins upon hormone binding. 
Receptor tyrosine kinases, RTKs, these receptors have intrinsic kinase activity and bisphorylate intracellular proteins upon ligand binding. Ligand gated ion channels, these receptors directly control ion channels, altering membrane potential upon hormone binding. 4. Intracellular receptors. Intracellular receptors are located within the cell, usually in the cytoplasm or nucleus. They are associated with lipid soluble hormones, such as steroids and thyroid hormones, which can easily cross the cell membrane. Intracellular receptors include cytoplasmic receptors. These receptors are located in the cytoplasm and translocate to the nucleus upon hormone binding. They include these pathways involve a series of protein protein interactions, phosphorylation events. Hormone receptors are specialized proteins located on the surface of or within target cells. These receptors play a critical role in transducing the signals carried by hormones into cellular responses. The interaction between hormones and the receptors is highly specific and allows for precise communication between different parts of the body. 2. Types of hormone receptors. Hormone receptors can be broadly categorized into two main types based on their location and mechanism of action, cell surface receptors and intracellular receptors. 3. Cell surface receptors. Cell surface receptors, also known as membrane receptors, are found on the plasma membrane of target cells. They are primarily associated with water-soluble hormones, such as peptides and catecholines, which cannot easily pass through the cell membrane. Cell surface receptors include G protein coupled receptors GPCRs. These receptors activate intracellular signaling pathways through the activation of G proteins upon hormone binding. Receptor tyrosine kinases RTKs. These receptors have intrinsic kinase activity and bisphorylate intracellular proteins upon ligand binding. Ligand gated ion channels. These receptors directly control ion channels, altering membrane potential upon hormone binding. 4. Intracellular receptors. Intracellular receptors are Cell surface receptors, also known as membrane receptors, are found on the plasma membrane of target cells. They are primarily associated with water soluble. They are primarily associated with water soluble hormones, such as peptides and catecholines, which cannot easily pass through the cell membrane. Cell surface receptors include. G protein coupled receptors GPCRs. These receptors activate intracellular signaling pathways through the activation of G proteins upon hormone binding. Recep receptor tyrosine kinases RTKs. These receptors have intrinsic kinase activity and bisphorylate intracellular proteins upon ligand binding. Ligand gated ion channels. These receptors directly control ion channels, altering membrane potential upon hormone binding. 4. Intracellular receptors. Intracellular receptors are located in the cell, usually in the cytoplasm or nucleus. They are associated with lipid soluble hormones, such as steroids and thyroid hormones, which can easily cross the cell membrane. Intracellular receptors include cytoplasmic receptors. These receptors are located in the cytoplasm and translocate to the nucleus upon hormone binding. They include steroid hormone receptors and thyroid hormone receptors. Nuclear receptors. These receptors are primarily located in the cell nucleus and directly influence gene transcription upon ligand binding. They regulate the expression of specific target genes by binding to hormone response elements HRVs and DNA. 5. Receptor activation and signaling. Hormone receptor binding triggers a conformational change in the receptor, leading to activation of downstream signaling pathways. These pathways involve a series of proteins. Hormone receptor binding triggers a conformational change in the receptor, leading to activation of downstream signaling pathways. These pathways involve a series of protein-protein interactions, phosphorylation events, and activation of second messengers that ultimately lead to cellular responses. 6. Receptor downregulation and desensitization. Constant exposure to high levels of hormone can lead to downregulation of its receptors. This is a regulatory mechanism that prevents overstimulation of cells and maintains sensitivity to changing hormone levels. Desensitization involves the receptor becoming less responsive to the hormone-due mechanisms like receptor phosphorylation or internalization. 7. Receptor selectivity and specificity. Hormone receptors exhibit selectivity and specificity, allowing them to distinguish between different hormones and distinct signals. The specificity is determined by the receptor's three-dimensional structure, which ensures only compatible hormones can bind. 8. Role in homeostasis. Hormone receptors play a crucial role in maintaining homeostasis by ensuring that hormone responses are appropriately controlled. Negative feedback loops involving hormone receptors help regulate hormones secretion and maintain physiological equilibrium. 9. Genetic disorders and mutations. Genetic mutations affecting hormone receptors can lead to hormonal imbalances and various disorders. For example, mutations in insulin receptors can result in diabetes mellitus, while mutations in thyroid hormone receptors can cause thyroid hormone resistance syndromes. 10. Targeted therapies. Understanding hormone receptors has enabled the development of targeted therapies. Drugs that modulate hormone receptor interactions can be used to treat conditions such as hormone sensitive cancers, e.g., hormone receptor positive breast cancer, and hormone related disorders. In conclusion, hormone receptors are specialized proteins that mediate the effects of hormones on target cells. They are classified into cell surface receptors and intracellular receptors based on their location and mechanism of action. Hormone receptor interactions initiate intricate signaling cascades that regulate various physiological processes and maintain overall homeostasis. Hormone transducers in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. I believe there might be a misunderstanding regarding the term hormone transducers. Hormones themselves act as signaling molecules, and they interact with specific receptors on target cells to initiate cellular responses. These receptors, as discussed earlier, are responsible for transducing the hormone signal into a cellular response. If you are referring to a different term or concept, please provide more context or clarify, and I'd be happy to assist you further. If you meant something else related to hormones, please provide additional details so that I can better understand your question. Types of receptors in hormones in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. Certainly, receptors play a crucial role in mediating the effects of hormones. There are several types of receptors that hormones can interact with, each with its own mechanisms of action. Let's explore the main types of hormone receptors in detail. Cell surface receptors. G protein coupled receptors GPCRs. These receptors are embedded in the cell membrane and interact with G proteins. Hormone binding to GPCRs causes activation of the associated G protein, leading to intracellular signaling cascades. Examples include the beta adrenergic receptor and the rhodopsin receptor. Receptor tyrosine kinases RTKs. RTKs are transmembrane proteins with both extracellular and intracellular domains. Hormone binding induces receptor dimerization and autophosphorylation, leading to activation of downstream signaling pathways. The insulin receptor is an example of an RTK. Ion channel receptors. These receptors are ion channels that open or close in response to hormone binding. Hormone binding alters the permeability of the membrane ions, resulting in changes in the membrane potential. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of an ion channel receptor. Hormone binding alters the permeability of the membrane ions, resulting in changes in the membrane potential. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of an ion channel receptor. Intracellular receptors. Nuclear receptors. These receptors are located in the Ion channel receptors. These receptors are ion channels that open or close in response to hormone binding. Hormone binding alters the permeability of the membrane ions, resulting in changes in the membrane potential. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of an ion channel receptor. Intracellular receptors. Nuclear receptors. These receptors are located in the cell nucleus and bind to like hormones, such as steroids and thyroid hormones. The receptor hormone complex acts as a transcription factor, regulating gene expression. Examples include the estrogen receptor and the glucocorticoid receptor. Cytoplasmic receptors. Some receptors are located in the cytoplasm and, upon hormone binding, translocate to the nucleus to regulate gene expression. The vitamin D receptor is an example of a cytoplasmic receptor. Enzyme linked receptors. Cytokine receptors. These receptors are often associated with the immune system and are involved in cell communication. Binding cytokines to the receptors triggers intracellular signaling cascades. Examples include interleukin receptors. Monolocyclase coupled receptors. These receptors are involved in mediating the effects of nature peptides, which regulate blood pressure and fluid balance. Activation of these receptors leads to the production of cyclic GMP. Each type of receptor has its unique structure, mechanism of action, and downstream signaling pathways. The diversity of hormone receptors enables cells to respond to a wide range of hormonal signals and coordinate complex physiological processes. Understanding these receptor types is essential for comprehending how hormones exert their effects on target cells and tissues. Hormone G protein coupled receptors in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. G protein coupled receptors GPC
GPCRs are transmembrane proteins with seven alpha helical transmembrane domains that span the cell membrane. They have an extracellular internus, an intracellular C-terminus, and three intracellular and three extracellular loops. The regions of the receptor are important for ligand binding, signal transduction, and interaction with G proteins. Mechanism of action. Ligand binding. When a hormone ligand binds to the extracellular region of the GPCR, it induces a conformational change in the receptor. Activation of G proteins. The G protein, consisting of three subunits alpha, beta, and gamma, is bound to the intracellular side of the receptor. Upon ligand binding, the activated receptor undergoes a conformational change that allows it to interact with an activated G protein. G protein activation. The activation of GPCR leads to the exchange of GPP bound to the alpha subunit for GTP. This causes the alpha subunit to dissociate from the G subunits, leading to their activation. Effector activation. The alpha subunit of the activated G protein interact with various effector proteins, such as the cyclase or phospholipase C. This interaction initiates intracellular signaling pathways. Generation of second messengers. The effector proteins produce second messengers, such as CAMP, IP3, and DAG. These molecules amplify the signal and trigger downstream cellular responses. Downstream signaling. The second messengers activate protein kinases, leading to phosphorylation of target proteins and activation of various signaling cascades. These cascades ultimately mediate the cellular response to the hormone. Diverse functions of GPCRs. GPCRs are involved in a wide range of physiological processes, including Sensing light, rhodopsin, and photoreceptor cells, regulation of heart rate, beta adrenergic receptors, control of smooth muscle contraction, muscle cell receptors, hormone secretion, secretion receptor, taste and smell, olfactory and respiratory receptors, regulation of immune responses. Sensing light, rhodopsin, and photoreceptor cells, regulation of heart rate, beta adrenergic receptors, control of smooth muscle contraction, muscle cell receptors, hormone secretion, secretion receptor, taste and smell, olfactory and respiratory receptors, regulation of immune responses, chemochemical receptors, sensing neurotransmitters, serotonin receptors, mediating pain perception, opioid receptors, examples of GPCRs and hormones. Sensing light, rhodopsin, and photoreceptor cells, regulation of heart rate, beta adrenergic receptors, control of smooth muscle contraction, muscle cell receptors, hormone secretion, secretion receptor, taste and smell, olfactory and respiratory receptors, regulation of immune responses, chemochemical receptors, sensing neurotransmitters, serotonin receptors, mediating pain perception, opioid receptors, examples of GPCRs and hormones. Adrenergic receptors, find adrenaline, adrenaline, dopamine receptors. Serotonin receptors must remain acetylcholine receptors, opioid receptors. Therapeutic importance. GPCRs are targets for a significant number of drugs, making them one of the most studied and exploited receptor families in drug development. A variety of medications, including antihypertensives, antipsychotics, and antihistamines, target GPCRs to regulate various physiological processes. In summary, GPCRs are a versatile class of receptors that play a central role in transmitting extracellular signals to intracellular responses. Their widespread presence, diverse functions, and therapeutic relevance underscore their importance in cellular communication and human health. Steroid receptors and hormones in detail very long answer. ChatGPT. Steroid hormones are lipophilic molecules synthesized from cholesterol and hormones such as cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. These hormones exert their effects by binding to specific intracellular steroid receptors, which are transcription factors that regulate gene expression. Let's explore the details of steroid receptors. Structure of steroid receptors. Steroid receptors are found within the cytoplasm or nucleus of target cells. They share a common modular structure. Enterinal domain NTT. This domain is involved in transcriptional activation, protein protein interactions, and ligand independent activation. DNA binding domain DBT. This domain recognizes specific DNA sequences called hormone response elements, HREs, located in the promoter region of target genes. Hinge region. Located between the DBT and ligand binding domain LDD. It facilitates receptor movement and binding to DNA. Ligand binding domain LDD. This domain binds to steroid hormone and undergoes conformational changes upon hormone binding, leading to receptor activation and interaction with co-activators or co-repressors. C terminal domain CTT. This domain is involved in hormone transcriptional activation and interaction with co-activators. Mechanism of steroid hormone action. Hormone binding. Steroid hormones diffuse through the cell membrane and bind to specific receptors within the cytoplasm or nucleus. Receptor activation. Hormone binding induces a conformational change in the receptor, allowing it to form homodimers or heterodimers and exposing its nuclear localization signal NLS. DNA binding. Activated receptors translocate to the nucleus and bind to specific HREs on the promoter region of target genes. Transcriptional regulation. The receptor HRE complex recruits co-activators, co and other transcription factors, leading to changes in chromatin structure and recruitment of RNA polymerase. This results in the initiation of repression of gene transcription. mRNA synthesis. Transcriptional regulation leads to the synthesis of mRNA, which is then translated into proteins that mediate the cellular response to steroid hormone. Examples of steroid receptors. Glucocorticoid receptor binds cortisol and regulates metabolism, immune response, and stress response. Estrogen receptors are alpha and beta, bind estrogen and play key roles in reproductive development, bone health, and cardiovascular function. Progesterone receptor binds progesterone and is crucial for pregnancy, menstruation, and maintaining uterine health. Androgen receptors bind testosterone and regulate male sexual development, secondary sexual characteristics, and other functions. Therapeutic implications. Steroid receptors are targets for numerous drugs used to modulate hormone activity. Hormone replacement therapies, anti-inflammatory drugs, and anti-cancer therapies often target steroid receptors to regulate their effects. In summary, steroid receptors play a fundamental role in mediating the effects of steroid hormones on gene expression and cellular responses. Their modular structure, hormone binding, and transcriptional regulation mechanisms make them critical players in numerous physiological processes, and their dysfunction leads to various. Enterinal domain NTT, this domain is involved in transcriptional activation, protein protein interactions, and ligand independent activation. DNA binding domain DBT, this domain recognizes specific DNA sequences called hormone response elements, HREs, located in the promoter region of target genes. Enterinal domain NTT, this domain is involved in transcriptional activation, protein protein interactions, and ligand independent activation. DNA binding domain DBT, this domain recognizes specific DNA. Enterinal domain NTT, this domain is involved in transcriptional activation, protein protein interactions, and ligand independent activation. DNA binding domain DBT, this domain recognizes specific DNA sequences called hormone response elements, HREs, located in the promoter region of target genes. Hinge region, located between the DBT and ligand binding domain LDD, it facilitates receptor movement and binding to DNA. Ligand binding domain LDD, this domain binds the steroid hormone and undergoes conformational changes upon hormone binding, leading to receptor activation and interaction with co-activators or co-repressors. C-terminal domain CTD, this domain is involved in hormone-dependent transcriptional activation and interaction with co-activators. Mechanism of steroid hormone action. Hormone binding, steroid hormones diffuse through the cell membrane and bind to the specific receptors within the cytoplasm or nucleus. Receptor activation, hormone binding induces a conformational change in the receptor, allowing it to form homodimers or heterodimers and exposing its nuclear localization signal NLS. DNA binding, activated receptors translocate to the nucleus and bind to specific HREs on the promoter region of target genes. Transcriptional regulation. The receptor HRE complex recruits co-activators, co-repressors, and other transcription factors, leading to changes in chromatin structure and the recruitment of RNA polymerase. This results in the initiation or repression of gene transcription. mRNA synthesis. Transcriptional regulation leads to the synthesis of mRNA, which is then translated into proteins that mediate the cellular response to the steroid hormone. Examples of steroid receptors. Glucocorticoid receptor binds cortisol and regulates metabolism, immune response, and stress response. Estrogen receptors are alpha and DR beta bind estrogen and play key roles in reproductive development, bone health, and cardiovascular function. Progesterone receptor binds progesterone and is crucial for pregnancy, menstruation, and maintaining uterine health. Androgen receptors bind testosterone and regulate male sexual development, secondary sexual characteristics, and other functions. Therapeutic implications. Steroid receptors are targets for numerous drugs used to modulate hormone activity. Hormone replacement therapies, anti-inflammatory drugs, and anti-cancer therapies often target steroid receptors to regulate their effects. In summary, steroid receptors play a fundamental role in mediating the effects of steroid hormones on gene expression and cellular responses.
Known as not binding to traditional cell surface receptors like other hormones, but it exerts its effects through interactions with target proteins and second messengers. Let's explore the details of how no influences hormone action. No signaling pathway. No synthesis. No is produced by the enzyme nitric oxide synthase (NOS), which converts L arginine into NO and citrulline. Diffusion. No is a small and highly diffusible gas that can cross cell membranes and travel to neighboring cells. Activation of guanylate cyclase in target cells. No binds to an activate soluble guanylate cyclase (SGC) and enzyme present in the cytoplasm. CGMP production. Activated SGC converts guanosine triphosphate (GTP) into cyclic guanosine monophosphate (CGMP). CGMP signaling. CGMP serves as the second messenger that mediates the effects of NO. It activates protein kinase GPKG, which phosphorylates various target proteins and ion channels. Influence of NO on hormones and endocrine functions. Vasodilation. NO is a potent vasodilator that relaxes vascular smooth muscle cells, leading to increased blood flow. This effect can influence hormone delivery to target tissues and affect hormone clearance by altering blood flow through organs. Neurotransmission. NO is involved in neurotransmission by modulating the release of neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin, and acetylcholine. This can affect hormone release and signaling in the nervous system. Insulin secretion. NO has been shown to influence insulin secretion from pancreatic beta cells. It enhances insulin release by stimulating CGMP production and activating package. Hypothalamic pituitary adrenal (HPA) axis. NO can modulate the HPA axis, which controls stress responses and hormone release. It can influence the release of hormones like cortisol through interactions with the adrenal glands and the hypothalamus. Immune response. No plays a role in immune responses by modulating the release of inflammatory mediators and influencing immune cell function. It can affect the production and release of cytokines and other immune-related hormones. Endothelin regulation. No can inhibit the release of endothelin one, a potent vasoconstrictor hormone produced by endothelial cells. This helps maintain vascular tone and blood pressure. Reproductive functions. No is involved in regulating reproductive functions, including hormone release and blood flow to reproductive organs. Therapeutic implications. The role of no in regulating various physiological PR. 